Hello students, welcome to NNC Biology. This is Neelavati, your biology lecturer. Today, let's understand a beautiful topic from chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance. The concept name is, where does DNA replication, transcription and translation occur in prokaryote as well as in eukaryotic cell? Okay, so before going to the topic, let us understand few basic things. So the first basic thing we need to understand, many students have confusion in that, the difference between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. So first of all, many students do not know actually which cell is considered as a prokaryotic cell or which organism is considered as prokaryote as well as eukaryotic cell. So already you have learned the biological classification that is in your class 11th, right? So there also we have studied about five kingdom classification. So in that, which are all the five kingdom that we have studied? Yes, kingdom Monera, M stands for Monera. Okay, then kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. So I have just written only one single letter from all this kingdom. So here kingdom monera means it includes bacteria. So the sole members of this kingdom is nothing but a bacteria. It means the bacteria are the only organism which are considered as prokaryotic cell so let's assume this is a cell it is nothing but a prokaryotic cell let me mention it as a prokaryotic cell so rest of all the organism whatever it is either it is a protista protista means all the planktons that we are going to see on the surface of the sea that is ocean even on the fresh water like datums and all you have studied all those things so protista, even your protozoa, everything and fungi, plants, animals, all these organisms, they belong to eukaryotic group. Okay, let's imagine this is a eukaryotic cell. Yes, okay ma'am, we have understood one thing that monera are nothing but the bacteria are comes under prokaryotic group. That is, they are prokaryotic cell. Rest are all eukaryotic. But what is the difference? So, why you consider this as a prokaryotic cell and this as a eukaryotic cell? Let me give you a simple example so that with this analogy, you can compare the basic difference between this prokaryote as well as the eukaryote. Just imagine you have entered into a bachelor room. Okay. So, there that guy has kept a stand that is a gas stove on a slab. Just imagine like that. So, he is telling this is my kitchen and you have entered or you have just turned that side. So, there only you have seen a cot. So, on that he is uh, sleeping. So, he is telling this is a bedroom. That means there is no particular partition in that single room. So, there only he has kept the stove and he is considering, considering it as a kitchen as well as the bedroom, everything. There is no partition. So, like that, here also in a prokaryotic cell, there are so many organelles are there. But th all these organelles do not have any partition or they do not have any membrane. Okay. So, the membrane bound organelles are absent here. Whereas in the eukaryotic cell, just imagine the normal houses what, where, uh, where we are all living, okay. So, there are separate kitchen, bedroom, dining hall, everything, right. Because there is a separate partition for all those things. In the same way, here also in a eukaryotic cell, if I am saying this is a chromosome, the chromosomes are present within the nucleus, I will say. So, how you can say that this is the nucleus? This is because there is a separate boundary for this nucleus. There is a separate membrane surrounding this nucleus. Then only I can say this is a separate organelle that is a nucleus. Whereas in the case of prokaryotic cell, here the chromosome is there. But I can't say this is the nucleus because it just lies within the cytoplasm itself. Because there is no membrane bound organelle. There is no membrane at all to separate it as a nucleus. Okay. So like such many organelles are present within this prokaryotic cell all are suspended within this space that is nothing but cytoplasm okay whereas here many organelles are there which are actually separated by a membrane suppose if i am saying inside there is a fluid i can consider it as a nucleoplasm so, nucleoplasm is present within the nucleus. I can't say this is a cytoplasm because there is a membrane around it. So, like that, if I come outside of this nucleus, there is a separate space. 
there is a fluid or there is a area which I consider as a cytoplasm. So within the cytoplasm, there might be many other organelles like mitochondria, chloroplast, whatever, depending on a kind of cell. So what we have understood from this, the membrane bound organelles are present in prokaryotes, whereas membrane bound organelles, sorry, I'm extremely sorry, membrane bound organelles are present in eukaryotes, whereas membrane bound organelles are absent in prokaryote. In a very simple way, we can say that there is a definite nucleus, there is no definite nucleus. That is a very simple sentence so that we can classify it or we can able to differentiate it. Let me write here, definite nucleus. Okay, but here, no definite nucleus. Where shall I write? I'll write here only within this. So, this is the basic difference. So, first thing we have understood. Now, the next concept we have to understood. That is a basic concept. What is that? That is central dogma of molecular biology. So, whatever we are today, students, either our appearance, like our eye color, hair color, hair texture, skin color, whatever, our height, everything, it is only because of the protein, okay. So, all these protein are actually encoded by the genes which are present on the DNA. So, that thing you are all understood, that process, how the protein is going to form from this gene is nothing but the central dogma of molecular biology. So, in this central dogma, so many steps are present. What are those steps? That also we will see. Later, we will come to the actual topic. Let me show that also. Yes, look at here. Here, I have just written a schematic part of the central dogma of molecular biology. Here, I have mentioned few points. So, let us see. Here is the DNA, right? So, DNA, once again, it undergo replication. Imagine this is the DNA that I have written the diagram of the DNA here, right? So, DNA will be having two strands already, you have know it. So, one is from 3 prime to 5 prime direction. Another one is from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, this DNA which will undergo replication so that it will undergo duplication so that it will produce one more copy. That is what we call it as a DNA replication. So, exact DNA nucleotides as well as the information will be duplicated or it will be just uh, replicate to form one more copy. That is what the replication is. Okay. Let me show that also. Right. Suppose if there are A, T, G, C, the nucleotides will be present. If A, T, if it is C, it will be G. It will be G, then it becomes C. So, like that, you know the complementary base sequence, how it will be present. The same sequences will be present here also. A, T, C, G, G, C, T, A, something like this. So, this process we call it as a replication. But the informations which are so present on these DNA strand, both the strands will not undergo the process of transcription. What exactly transcription means? Already you have understood that also. Suppose if I just take out this DNA and if I just unwind the strand, unwinding means if I just open this strand in this stretch, something like this. If I mark this as a 3 prime to 5 prime and this as a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So here are the sequences. Okay, let's assume here are the sequences and this is the DNA. So what happened here in the transcription? Just by looking at the strand which is coding 3 prime to 5 prime, okay, the information which also present on this strand will be copied. For example, let me take one more color to show you how it exactly happens. Okay, so the information, first the strand will get separate, the information will be coded like this. So, all the informations which are so present that will be get undergo the complementary sequences and we are going to get this strand. So, if I just take out this strand outside, then the information will be present like this. If A, instead of A, this is RNA, this is RNA. So, in the RNA, instead of thymine, the uracil will be present. So, I should write U, T, A, G means C, C means G. So, once again, U, A, like that the information will be present. So, this is nothing but our mRNA. So, this process, we call it as a transcription. Okay. And now the informations are here. And all these informations will be in the form of coded uh, format. Okay. Coded format in the sense. Just imagine these are the three nucleotides. Okay. These three nucleotides which code for one particular amino acid. Just like the row number, how we are going to assign for a student. 
uh, a student come his name is x let's assume so you are just going to give a roll number one two three then one more student will come let's imagine his name is y then you are going to assign the roll number four five six so like that if all the students just come and sit side by side just by looking at their roll number how they are going to arrange okay in the same way here also just by looking at these nucleotide sequence the amino acids start coming one after the other and they start forming a chain sequence like this this is one amino acid this is another amino acid so like that all the amino acid they start connected by a peptide bond okay now they will connect together by a peptide bond this is nothing but a protein so ultimately we are doing this process our body is doing this process to get a protein okay that process we call it as what translation so this is what the central dogma of molecular biology now let's get into the actual topic where does this replication transcription translation occur suppose if it is prokaryote where it occurs if it is eukaryote where it occurs now the answer becomes so easy because you have understood the basic thing let's get inside the topic now yes look at here so this is our prokaryotic cell and this is our eukaryotic cell right so in the eukaryotic cell i have mentioned separately i am showing here the nucleus and rest of the thing which is so present outside it is a cytoplasm but here no nucleoplasm no nucleus therefore the entire space is nothing but it is a cytoplasm now let's imagine here is the dna chromosome is nothing but dna only so this dna which undergo replication and produce one more copy where within the cytoplasm itself okay that means the replication process occur within the cytoplasm and from the dna soon after its replication whatever the information which is so present in the dna that will be transcribed in the form of mrna right that process we call it as a transcription so that also formed within the cytoplasm itself this is our mrna mrna it means mrna is also forming within the cytoplasm that means the transcription also occurs within the cytoplasm and after that obviously the amino acid which are so present on the mrna or the coded sequence which are so present on the mrna based on the coded sequence the amino acids are start forming that means we are going to get a protein here ultimate product that process we call it as a translation that also occur within the cytoplasm itself it means what is the conclusion we can draw from here all these three steps of replication transcription and translation all occur within the cytoplasm only so it is very very important thing you need to learn you need to understand because it is a neat question or your straight entrance question okay it's very important so many student made mistake in this concept only that's why i made a separate video next come to eukaryotic cell so here in the eukaryotic cell the chromosome lies here so when it undergo the process of replication it produce one more copy that means obviously which is happening within the nucleus what the replication process then by looking at the genes or by looking at the information present on the gene or the dna the mrna is going to form that also occur within the nucleus it means the transcription process occur in the nucleus itself so both replication and transcription occurring within the nucleus so finally we got this mrna mrna so this mrna soon after its forming or soon after its formation it start coming out it start coming out slowly okay so finally it combines with the ribosome and start forming the protein that is ultimately we are going to get a protein chain by the process of translation but where it is occurring where i am showing here yes it is in the cytoplasm it means the translation occurs in the cytoplasm of a cell so what do you understand from this thing so the common process which occur both in prokaryote as well as in the eukaryote in the cytoplasm is nothing but the translation so you may get a question like this name a common process of central dogma of molecular biology which occur in cytoplasm both in prokaryotes as in eukaryotes then you have to write it is translation only so except this or apart from this rest of all the process like replication transcription which occurs in the nucleus here whereas in the 
prokaryotic occurs in the sarcoplasm. This is what. Okay. So, hope I am very clear about this topic. Hope you enjoyed the concept also. So, if you like the video, please hit the like button and please do share the video to your friends. Thanks for watching.